we know that all the atoms are spherical in shape. Sphere is a three-dimensional object. The two-dimensional precursor to the sphere is a circle. In a circle we have only two axes x and y and a circle is what we refer to as a ring. Consider a particle moving in a ring of radius r in the xy plane. This is a particle which is moving around in a circle. The radius of the circle is r and the angle made by the particle with the x-axis is phi. If we start from here make one complete revolution it will come to 360 degrees in other words 2 pi since the particle is moving in the ring the potential energy will be zero the kinetic energy will be equivalent to half mv square since we have only two dimensions, the Hamiltonian operator in Cartesian coordinates, that is x, y and z coordinates, is minus a square by 8 pi square m into dou square by dou a square plus dou square by dou y square. Since we are considering only the x, y plane, there is no potential energy. Potential energy is taken as zero. And uh, this is a total energy operator which corresponds only to kinetic energy in this case. But since we are considering a ring and the particle has a radius r it makes an angle phi with this axis. Polar coordinates are more comfortable to use and so we convert the Hamiltonian operator in Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates r theta phi. Of course in this case since we don't have the hazel axis we don't have the angle theta which is the angle made with the hazel axis. x will be equal to r cos phi and y is equal to r sin phi. Using this the Hamiltonian operator in polar coordinates will be minus a square by 8 pi square m r square minus a square 8 by 8 pi square m r square into d square by d phi square. This will be the Hamiltonian operator in polar coordinates. And for a particle moving in a circle, the moment of inertia is given by i is equal to m r square. In this expression, instead of m r square, we have to substitute i, which is the moment of inertia. Then we will get Hamiltonian operator in polar coordinates will be equal to minus square by pi square i by d square by d phi square. This will be the Hamiltonian operator in polar coordinates for the particle in a ring. If you write this Schrodinger equation, here we write it as h hat f is equal to f. Why we have f instead of psi? In the polar coordinates, we have r, theta, and phi. When you are considering only the value of r, we represent the function as capital R. When we are considering only the variable theta, we substitute it with capital P and when we consider only the angle phi the function we take it as f in other words f is a function of phi p is a function of theta and capital r is a function of small r 
in this operator we have only the variable phi and so we take the function as f and f is a function of only phi and if we substitute the value of Hamiltonian operator given by this equation 4 that is minus s square by 8 pi square i into d square by d phi square we will get something like this now taking all the terms other than d square f by d phi square to the right hand side it is minus s square by 8 pi square i to the right hand square we will get d square f by d phi square is equal to minus 8 pi square i e f by h square. Now take the whole term on the right hand side to the left hand side. Negative term will become positive term and the right hand side will become equal to 0. Here the function is f. This is a function of phi. All the other terms 8 pi square i e by h square is taken equal to m square. And substituting this, we get d square f by d phi square is plus m square f equal to 0. If we solve this, we get different solutions for this. One is f is equal to n sine m phi. And the other is f dash is equal to n dash cos m phi. These two solutions we don't find any complex number and so there is real set of solutions and this is known as circular harmonics. The next solution will be f double dash is equal to a exponential plus or minus i m phi. Here we find the complex number i and so this is an imaginary solution. n, n dash and a are normalization constants. These two are equivalent. Exponential plus or minus i m phi is e power plus or minus i m phi which is equal to cos m phi plus or minus i sin m phi. That is when it is e power i m phi it is cos m phi plus i sin m phi and when it is e power minus i m phi we get cos m phi minus i sin m phi. The solutions 11 and 12 for the function f are finite, continuous and single value. And only if these three conditions are obeyed, we say that the function is an acceptable solution. And now we look at the first slide. If you look at this point, if we make a complete revolution from here to here, it is 360 degrees and this 2 pi. And the point phi and phi plus 2 pi represent the same point in the circle. And We get sin m phi equal to sin m phi plus 2 pi. Similarly, cos m phi is equal to cos m phi plus 2 pi. And these two relationships will be valid only when capital M is equal to 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3. We should know when it is not valid. It will not be valid when it is 1.1 or 1.2 or 1.3 etc. It will be valid only when 1, 2 etc. plus 1 plus 2 etc. minus 1 minus 2 etc. It will not be valid when it is minus 1.3 for example. Similarly, A exponential i m phi will be equal to A exponential i m phi plus 2 pi since phi and phi plus 2 phi represent the same point. e power phi is equal to e power i m phi plus 2 pi and this will be equivalent to a exponential i m phi into a exponential i pi 2 m. 
If you look at this relation carefully, here we find A exponential I m phi. Here also we find A exponential I m phi. These two have to be equal. The paints exponential i 2 pi m should be equal to 1 only, only when this is equal to 1 this will be equal to this if we say that e exponential i 2 pi m is equal to 1 e power i 2 pi m is equal to 1 that means e power 0 will be equal to 1 that means i 2 pi m should be equal to 0 in other words we can express this exponential i 2 pi m as a combination of two trigonometric functions cos i 2 pi m and i sin i 2 i sin 2 pi m here we will not have this i make sure that this i is not present here this will be valid only when m is equal to 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 plus or minus 3 etc. Only certain permitted values of m are there. Not all the values of m are permitted. That is the real meaning of quantization. For example, when m is equal to 0, this will become sine 0. When m is equal to 0, this will become cos 0 sin 0 is 0 and cos 0 is 1 and so we'll get it as 1. Within a ring there is no boundary. The particle can be found anywhere within this ring as long as the radius is r. The particle can be found here, here, here anywhere within this ring and so there is no boundary the, we assume that the value of r is constant there is no condition for the wave function to vanish at any point and so there is no boundary condition now we will look at the normalization of the real set of solutions the particle starts from zero and it ends particle starts from zero and it ends at three sixty degree and it is two pi and so therefore the limits are taken as zero to two pi for particle in a ring. If you take the first solution which is a sine function f is equal to n sine m phi f is equal to n sin m phi and if we take this solution and uh, normalize it n sin m phi star n sin m phi and n into n and n are taken as constant out n square the limit is 0 to 2 pi sin square m phi sin square m phi will be equal to 1 minus cos 2 m phi by 2 substituting this and uh, if we integrate it this will be split into two terms one term will be just d phi by 2 and the other term will be cos 2 m phi by 2 d phi and the integration of the second term will result in 0 and the integration of the first term d phi by 2 will become phi by 2 and if you apply the limits, it will be 2 pi minus 0 by 2. And so, we will get f is equal to 1 by root pi sin m phi. f dash is equal to 1 by root pi cos m phi. These are the normalized agent function for a particle in a ring. This is the real set of agent functions, which are normalized. Now, we will look at the normalization of the imaginary set of solutions. 0 to 2 pi f double dash star f double dash d phi equal to 1 f double dash is taken as a exponential plus i m phi f double dash star will be the complex conjugate of the function 
the complex conjugate of s plus exponential plus i m phi will be minus i m phi exponential minus i m phi the complex conjugate of exponential plus i m phi will be the exponential minus i m phi if we substitute this complex conjugate then we'll find this will be e power minus i m phi this will be e power plus i m phi this will be equal to e power i m phi minus i m phi which will be e power 0 and the, so the whole thing will become 1 the two constant a are taken out a square integral 0 to 2 pi d phi will be equal to 1 if we integrate it phi and apply limits it will be 2 pi minus 0 and so a square into 2 pi equal to 1 a is equal to 1 by root 2 pi substituting this value of a in the imaginary solution that's 1 by root 2 pi here we will get f double dash is equal to 1 by root 2 pi exponential plus or minus i m phi which is the agent function for a particle in a ring this is, represents the normalized agent function and this represents the imaginary set of solutions now we will recall the equation 9 uh, we defined m square as 8 pi square i e by s square we need the value v and take all the other terms to the right other side we will get e is equal to m square s square by 8 pi square i of course when m is equal to 0 plus r minus 1 plus r minus 2 plus r minus 3 etc this will be the expression for the eigen value of a particle in a ring for m is equal to 0 E will be 0 and the rotating particle does not have 0 point energy. Will m is equal to 1, this will be 1 square 1. Minus 1, once again, minus 1 square is 1. These two are two similar values and so the two degenerate values. Similarly, when m is equal to 2, we have 2 square 4. When it is m is equal to minus 2 also we get minus 2 square which is also 4 and these two values are degenerate values. Hence all the energy levels for the particle in a ring are doubly degenerate. Thank you.